Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be moving the player using some scripts finally. In the last episode we set up this player. Before we get started I just want to go ahead and organize this a bit better. So we got our FBX files, we got our materials and our animator. I will create a folder for FBX files. So I'll just select these with shift and left click, put them in there create a new mat uh, new folder for materials put these guys in the materials and we'll create another folder for animators and put that in there that's pretty good now we also need a new folder for scripts so create a new script it's called um, player motor so I'll select the player right here and I will add the script to it and make sure you do have a character controller here if you haven't watched the last episode you need to have this in order for this to work first I will delete all of this code I don't think we're gonna need it I mean all of it and I'm also going to zoom in so you guys can see a bit better so in order to do this we need to access the character controller on our player we can do that by creating a new variable here calling it character controller the name will be controller of course this is not enough I will create another float here and call it move speed and I will set it to around 4 also since our character needs to get to the floor somehow we need some kind of gravity so we can use that create another float this one is going to be called gravity and I'm gonna set this one to 4 also or actually 6 and in order to move our player we're going to feed the player or the character controller a vector 3 value which we're going to add onto our position but so we need a vector 3 move direction now we need a start function so create a void start function this function will get called each time the object is instantiated in this case it will be just called whenever we start the game so we do have a character controller here but the engine doesn't know which character controller that is we need to tell it character controller equals to get component character controller and then clo close it off like this so basically since this script this script that we're writing this in is going to be on our player right here and we're, what we're doing is we're telling the script to check if the player has a component character controller which it does so it takes that and it stores it into that variable sorry I made a little mistake here what I meant to say was controller instead of character controller now we need a void update and this is where our code is going to run I like to always organize my code a bit better so I'll create a new function which will be call, called void move we're going to have to create another two floats a float move x so this is the x axis that we're gonna move on that will be equal to input dot get axis and the axis name is horizontal make sure you type it in right if you don't know how uh, how it should be typed you can go to into unity go edit project settings and input and then you'll get these axes right here and you will have a horizontal which is left and right and you will have a vertical which is up and down or in our case um, forward and backwards you also want to create a float move z which is equal to input dot get axis vertical so what this does it creates a new float with which float is a numeric value and each time we press for example if we press a our move x value is going to be minus one and if you press d it's going to be one and if we press w our move z is going to be one and if we're pressing S, then it's going to be minus one. You can read more about this on the Unity's document, documentation website. 
what we need to do with this is we need to tell the character controller that we want to move our player accordingly with our buttons. We can do that by going move direction, which is the direction that we're going to feed to our player and setting it equal to a new vector 3 that is equal to move x 0 because we don't want to move up or down so we don't want to jump and move z so let me try and demonstrate this a bit better we have our player and our player has a position right here if we change the x value which we can do with move x then it, then it moves left and right and if we change the z value we move forward and backward so basically all we're doing is this but only using script and um, w a s and d keys i'm trying to explain this as, as the best i can hopefully it works but we don't want to really move unless we're on the ground luckily unity has made this easy for us so we can just go if controller dot is grounded and then we need to close it off like this we're going to move only if the con if controller is grounded but what if the controller is not grounded so if we're not standing on ground we have to somehow get to the ground so outside of this function we're going to type in move direction which is the direction of our movement dot y which is the up and down axis minus equals gravity so if we're not grounded our y position is going to get decreased by the gravity amount which is six each second or each frame actually but also this is not gonna work very well because we can only move at a speed of one because the get a, a, the x horizontal and vertical only return a value of one or minus one we want to somehow multiply those values so we can move a bit faster so under here we're going to type move direction times equals move speed so every frame we're going to check the value of move x and the value of move z so let's say we're trying to move right we press the d key and this value changes to 1 then it goes here and it gets multiplied or this vector gets multiplied by 4 so what that means is going to go this value times 4 which would, will then be 4 this value times 4 which will be 0 and let's say we did not press the W or the S key this is also going to be 0 all we have to do now is just tell our controller to move on this on these axes so just go controller dot move and then feed the motion move direction and as I said this is going to happen every frame but I don't think that's very good since some machines may have 60 frames per second and some may have 30 frames per second and we want the player to move exactly the same on both of them we can fix that by going down here and multiplying by time dot delta time this is going to make sure that we move each second and not each frame I forgot to explain that typing this is exactly as typing this so these two are exactly the same except this one is much shorter I'm going to delete this and let's see if this works so if you go into our engine click play and you can see that nothing happens that's my mistake I just wanted to show you what happens if I don't do this so I did create a function but this function is not getting called anywhere so I could put it in the start method but that's only going to call it once we need to put it in the update method so we need to type this this is exactly the same as if I did this if I just typed all of this into the update function it would work exactly the same except doing it like this makes it much more cleaner and organized 
Now if we try and do it, click play, you can see that our player drops down and now we can use the W, A, S and D keys to move our player. We're going to be expanding this script in future episodes, we're going to make a sprint function next time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, if you did be sure to leave a like, comment down below, you can support me on Patreon if you want, subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in the next one, bye bye.